Hello ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot to cover so I'm going to start right away. Today's objective will be to how to handle a situation where you've taken battle damage and you have lost your navigational system in terms of your Eggy. Eggy, remember, is your primary navigational system and when that goes out, uh, so does all hope of ever returning back home. So, the very first thing you should always do when you hop onto a multiplayer server, regardless if you know it or not, is to read the briefing. The briefing will always tell you everything you need to know. I keep getting questions asked to me about, hey, Ralphie, I just hopped on a multiplayer server, I don't know where to go. Read the briefing, that will explain a lot, or look at your waypoints. If you're in an A10, this is simple. You just look at your TAD, you scroll out, and hey, you see all of these waypoints. I guess that's where I'm supposed to be heading to. But that's if you have an Eggy might be a slightly different story when you don't have Eggy to rely on anymore. The other thing I keep getting asked is, hey, what about if I'm in an F-15 and there is no waypoints? Well, that's very simple. If this is the multiplayer server I were to join and I'm in an F-15 and I don't see any waypoints, I will look at where Bullseye is if I press F-10 map. Bullseye is up here. Chances are this is where Blue 4 spawns, this is where Op 4 spawns. They start here, fly this way, we start here, we fly that way. Now, our... Uh, current objective is let's say I've hopped into a multiplayer server I've read my briefings I've got armed I'm ready to go and I know that I'm gonna need to take off from here head over here this is probably ingress point and knock all these guys out and then I know I'm gonna be coming straight back to this airfield and we are at Tbilisi so what I'm gonna do and set up is I'm gonna make sure that my TACAN, my ILS, and my ATC frequencies are set up for this airfield. So should something unlikely like my Eggy going out happen when I'm in the middle of nowhere, well, I can always turn those things on and I'll be able to navigate back here. If let's say you were in a 104 server, you're in an A10, and these are Blue 4, these are all Op 4, uh, you do not have A10 slots anywhere here, here, or here, and you're unfortunately stuck with spawning here, and all the fighting's up here, well, you're kind of shit out of luck. You're going to need to take off from Batumi, fly over there, do your thing. But when you're done and you want to go back home to rearm and reload, are you going to fly straight back down to Batumi? No, you're not. You're going to fly back towards Sanaki, aren't you? Because it's a shorter distance. You can rearm, refuel over here, do your thing, go back and start all over again, right? So if I were to spawn here and I wanted another airfield that I'm going to be coming back on, then I would probably set up my ATC, my TACAN, my ILS for this airfield, right? So think ahead. And that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my TACAN and my ILS. You don't have a knee board with all of this stuff done. You don't need to fret. All you need to do is scroll into the airfield of interest. In this case, it's Tbilisi Lucini. I'm going to click the little blue circle for this airfield, and you have all the information there. There's my TACAN 25 X ray, there's my runways and ILS, as well as my ATC, which is 138. Now, remember, this is not an ILS tutorial. If you would like an ILS tutorial, I already have one. You can click here, or you can go down to the description, and the link will be there. So, for, let's say I want to uh, take off from here to out there, that's what we're going to be doing because I'm going to be taxiing out this way, I'm going to take off there. On the way back, I'm going to go ahead and land from here to here. So here to here, that is runway 13, 130. Uh, for 130, ILS is 110.3. Tack in to 5, we do not turn it on. ILS 110.3 and the ATC for this airfield is 130. All right, now you may be asking, why did I choose this weather? Well, I chose this weather because I know the terrain. I've been flying here for so long that if I were to lose all my navigational system, because I already know where I'm taking off from and I know where I'm heading to, I know what direction I can go back to to get back towards friendly territory and especially the airfield that I want. Because I'm just very familiar with the terrain around here. And that would be cheating. And the objective here is to how to figure out how to get to friendly territory, and especially back towards uh, the airfield you took off from, uh, if you are, let's say, not very familiar with this terrain. Which is why I have zero visibility, and I'm going to make sure I stay inside of the cloud. Because I want to be not able to see outside. My objective is to show you this uh, as if I don't know the terrain. Now, I believe that the clouds here are set to a ceiling of 9,000. And because I want to stay inside the clouds, I'm going to make sure 
that I'm going to set an altitude alert at 8,000 feet so that if I reach 8,000 and I uh, don't want to go above that, I'm going to have an altitude alert uh, warning go off to tell me, hey, you know, just get back down. Because I want to stay inside the cloud for the purposes of this demonstration. As you can see, it is a very, very bumpy area. I have turbulence and some winds turned on, though not very crazy. But as you can see, it is trashing around quite a bit. Flaps up, and we're just going to climb up to altitude. Now, if you still had your Aggie on, for example, and you wanted to navigate back home, like I said back then, all you'd have to do is go and choose waypoint zero, because that is your initial position that you started off from. That is the airfield you're at. So, you know, I just... This is waypoint two, waypoint one, waypoint zero, initial position. Hey, look at that. It's telling me turn 180 degrees for four miles. Uh, why? Because that's the airfield I took off from. So, turn around. My HSI is telling me the same thing. Hey, head this way for five miles. The airfield's back that way. So, easy, easy, easy way of navigating. Uh, if you don't know this by now, you really need to go and do some navigational tutorials that you will see online for uh, just navigating with the A-10. Because this stuff should already be very easy to you. If you don't know this, but you know how to drop GBU-10s, then uh, you got a problem, mate doesn't help when you don't know where you're going right now remember when I said I'm gonna set up the altitude alert in order to do that you would hit the altitude alert on the UFC and we're gonna head over to the ceiling and I'm gonna set the ceiling to 8,000 enter that there we go so we're at 7,830 if I were to increase the altitude and we hit 8,000 I should get a warning ceiling there's the warning. And I obviously don't want to go above that because I will break the cloud deck and I don't want to do that. Okay, now before we get into the, some mountainous regions, I'm going to go ahead and start here so that we don't crash, especially in zero visibility. So, uh, I'm going to pretend like we're taking fire right now and that we've just gotten shot and our eggy goes down. Autopilot. So the first thing that we are going to see is that you lose the TAD map as well as the HSI. The HSI no longer shows any waypoint information. Additionally, we've also went and switched from EGI over to HARS automatically. Now, HARS stands for the Heading and Attitude Reference System, and as the name suggests, it only gives you heading and attitude. Now, HARS has taken over both the ADI and the HSI, which is neat. However, it does induce one small little problem, which is that HARS will drift over time. With every single maneuver that you're going to make, uh, it is going to start accumulating certain errors. And after some time of making aggressive turns left and right, uh, you may no longer be facing the horizon. So now to make this even more interesting, I'm going to go ahead and say we just lost both our left and right MFD and our IFFCC is dead. Now that we're flying really blind, let's go ahead and take a look. The instruments we're going to be focusing on are our climb gauge, our compass over here, while it's still somewhat correct, and our backup ADI, which is not tied in to these two instruments that are being fed information from the HARS or the EGI, which no longer works, so just HARS. Additionally, you also have a backup whiskey compass, and this is not tied into any systems either. So, we can always reference this with this to see if there's any drift, as well as this with this to see if there's any drift. You can compensate for drift with this panel over here, but I'm not too well versed with the HAR system since I never really use it. So in this instance, instead of trying to go real ape shit with everything, let's just keep it nice and simple. We took off from Tbilisi, we went, took off to the northwest, logic dictates in order to get back home, we need to fly back south. If I press F10 and cheat a little bit, this is where we took off, and indeed we are to the northwest. So, obviously, we need to make a turn, 180 degrees, head back south, southeast, towards Tbilisi. Then I'm going to enable TACAN. We've already tuned into the TACAN station at Tbilisi, so once we flip it on, we're going to get the TACAN information and just keep flying this way. Once we get relatively close, I'll flip on ILS and we'll make an ILS approach, and we're back home easy peasy. Now in order for TACAN to work you have to be obviously at the right station, you have to be within line of sight of the runway and your, your aircraft, and you have to be within range. I believe the TACAN range is somewhere within 130 nautical miles. 
we're obviously way closer than that. We're somewhere like within 20 miles of Tbilisi, so we are fine. We just need to make sure we're tall enough to get above these mountain peaks and have a direct line of sight with Tbilisi, which I believe we should be A-OK. -okay. But my main concern is now just head south, turn on Takan, and navigate to where the Takan station is. Okay, now that I'm facing east-southeast, I'm gonna trim the aircraft. As you will notice, although your autopilot no longer works, at least trim is still A-OK. -okay. Next, I'm gonna flip on the TACAN to the ON. We're gonna be in the transmit and receive. And we also need to enable this on the panel. And now we need to follow the needle number one. We are currently something like 23, 24 miles away from the station and we just need to make a right turn for the TACAN beacon. Now, if this was you, you'd obviously be seeing everything that's going on outside, so this is all you'd need. You just keep flying in this direction, follow the needle where the TACAN station is, and once you get within 10 miles, you should be able to look outside the pit and see the airfield, and then you just make a visual approach. Mine is going to be a wee bit different because I can't see anything outside, so I'm going to need to rely on ILS. Now, the other thing that I'm going to want to do here is, as well, turn my course over to the runway heading of 130. Because right now, this is telling us that the TACAN station where the airfield is is somewhere over here in front of us. Meanwhile, our airport runway heading is from here to here. So we're slightly off of where we need to be. Uh, right now, I'm not going to worry about it too, too much. It's only until ILS pops in where this is going to be a big problem for us because we need to line up with the runway and currently we're not lined up with the runway. The icon over here tells us this is our aircraft, this is where we currently are, meanwhile this is where we want to be. So we are currently to the left of the runway. In order to visualize everything I just said, I have this handy dandy little application that I found online and the URL is up there if you're interested. Uh, let's simulate that we have a runway here and it runs north to south right so i want to land on it on a bearing of 180 so i'm going to be landing uh, south to north this is my current position now i'm going to first set up my needle over here like we did in the a10 to face the heading of the runway which is north so i'm going to move this over and that's exactly north great as the picture is right now what it's telling me is this is me this is where I am, this is where I want to be. And now take a look over here. This is me, and this is where I want to be. And sure enough, I'm currently flying to intercept this needle, and I'm gonna make a left-hand turn in order to line up with the runway. And when I start getting very close, this is gonna start moving in. So now, you should start seeing this move over on the inside, and we should start making our left-hand turn. And we are currently lined up with the runway, and indeed we currently are lined up exactly with the runway. And we would follow all this all the way in. And if there is minor deviations right now, it's telling us we are slightly to the left. And as we get closer, it gets a lot more sensitive. And indeed, if you see, we're just a little to the left of it. And if we drift very much to the left, you can see that it's telling us that on the HSI. So my relative position of the runway is replicated on the HSI, which is why this is such a beautifully powerful tool in order to navigate towards the runway, as long as you understand what you're doing. The worst thing that pilots usually try to do when they're coming in for a landing on a south to north, like this example, is that they're flying in and trying to intercept this course. They want to make this left 90 degree angle uh, almost perpendicular. And then by the time they fly and they start seeing that the needle here moves in it's already too late and by the time they roll out they're already on the right side of where they need to be as is replicated over here so then they're trying to turn to the left and intercept this course and then course correct it back to the right and if you're not very good at this you end up zigzagging all over the place and it's just a horrible experience so it's nicer if you try and intercept at a nice comfortable angle that you're very familiar with. 45 degrees is perfect. You know, the shallower you make it, the easier it is for you. So as you're coming in, 
the needle starts moving and you can very calmly and gently turn to the left and line yourself up with the runway. So that's how that works. So in order to account for that, I will need to turn to the right and intercept this line. And since we are getting rather close, we're within 14 miles, I'm gonna start descending as well and I'm gonna decrease the speed since we're doing like a cool 300 knots. And let's flip on our ILS and flip the ILS on here. Now we could click Able, and but you'll notice uh, we're still kind of screwed here. We're not getting anything. So another thing to note that if you do lose your Eggy system and you're trying to use ILS, you will not have the yellow bars, which are the localizer and glide slope bars. Instead, you're going to be heavily reliant on the glide slope marker here and then using this over here in order to line yourself up with the runway. Now, we haven't picked up the signal just yet. We're entering 10 miles just now, so it should flip on any moment now. So currently, we're somewhat lined up with the runway. We're kind of low at 3,700. We haven't picked up the ILS signal just yet. As you can tell, the red marker is still on. And now that we're lined up, I'm gonna make a right turn to correct. There we go. Okay, ILS intercepted signal, the flag disappeared, and we are way below the glide slope. Now instead of climbing and trying to catch it, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fly nice, straight and level. I'm gonna focus more on being lined up with the runway, and I'm gonna wait until the needle drops, and we're gonna try and keep it at the center in order to be at glide slope. Again, this is not an ILS tutorial, so my glide slope is gonna be really bad. There's my outer ILS marker beacon. Gear down, flaps down. Altitude, altitude. Don't worry about that. Glide slope is still telling us we need to descend. We're to the right of the runway, as you can tell by the HS size marker. Correct for that. We should be relatively where we need to be. There's the inner beacon right here. I never liked the ILS approach in this airfield. It always feels a little weird because it's a hilly area. But there's the runway. We got relatively exactly where we needed to be. We stop looking at the instruments once we have a visual of the runway. And now we just try and keep her on the straight level. Nice and gentle. Wonderful. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So I know it got a little hairy there at the end, but the main concept here is use the TACAN in order to get to where you want to be, but make sure that you input all this information when you start the game so you don't have to fiddle with anything, any of the gauges, when you're struggling really hard just to keep your aircraft up in the air. So I hope this was educational for you guys. I'll see you gentlemen next time. Cheers.